Hello everyone. This is our fourth part and the last part of the lecture series where we were discussing about different aerobics and anaerobic bacteria and how these bacteria, uh, different bacteria are classified as aerobic or anaerobic categories depending upon their relationship with the oxygen, right? The, can they use the oxygen as a, uh, a final electron acceptor uh, during their energy metabolism and ATP generation or not? And secondly, how bacteria deal with reactive oxygen species? What and, and according to that, we'll subclassify bacteria. And the culture media, differential culture media, which we use for this purpose is sodium thioglycolate broth liquid media, right? When we discussed that in this tube, we are having basically nutrient, uh, nutrient uh, broth, right? For the, uh, to support the growth of the bacteria. With that, uh, we are also had, having some reducing agents like uh, thioglycolate and uh, L-cysteine so that oxygen can be uh, removed from the culture medium and anaerobic environment can be created and agar is also put into this tube so that oxygen diffusion is impeded or reduced and in the end for, uh, we also put uh, zurin, Reza zurin as an oxygen indicator that in the presence of that Reza zurin indicator turns into pink color and if there's no oxygen, it, it doesn't turn into pink color. Now, let's suppose we have these five test tubes with sodium glycothylate, sodium uh, glyco, uh, thioglycolate, sodium thioglycolate uh, nu uh, nutrient medium, right? Now, these are five different test tubes. And what we are doing that we have inoculated this with different uh, specimens, right, Micro, microbial specimens, right, and depending upon the growth, we can classify the bacteria. Let's suppose in this test tube, in this test tube, we have put a special type of bacteria and later on we see that bacteria only grow at the bottom. Bacteria only grow at the bottom of the tube but they don't grow at the top, right? Now, if bacteria can are growing in the culture media only at the bottom and rest of the tube, there's no growth of bacteria and no survival of the bacteria, it means these bacteria are strictly anaerobic because as we discussed in these tubes, upper part has high oxygen tension. As you go deeper in the tube, oxygen tension keep on reducing and lower most part is anaerobic, no oxygen, right? Now, in this tube, if bacteria are growing only at the bottom, it means this type of bacteria can only grow, yes, in the absence of oxygen because if they were able to grow in the oxygen, they should be growing at the top also. So, they are growing only in anaerobic environment, right? And we say that such bacteria need very strict anaerobic environment or they are obligate anaerobes. That it is, these bacteria require obligatorily anaerobic environment. Now, why they are so? Question is that, uh, these are, this is most primitive type of bacteria. Why these, some bacteria are obligate anaerobes? There are multiple reasons, right? Let's start with it. Number one. First we look, these bacteria are related with their energy metabolism. If they are not growing at the top, it means aerobic, aerobic metabolism is, yes, aerobic metabolism is not present. If they are multiplying only at the bottom, in the bottom, if they are multiplying, it means they can, uh, they are doing for energy anaerobic metabolism. So we say that an aerobic energy metabolism is there metabolism is they are for example they are doing the fermentation so anaerobic energy metabolism is there then okay anaerobically they are growing they are able to uh, do fermentation but aerobically they could not do uh, they could not use oxygen for the growth purpose to make the ATP but 
why we don't see any of these bacteria at the top. One reason is they are not growing because they cannot use the oxygen. Second reason is that how they deal with reactive oxygen species. If these bacteria, if these bacteria are near the top, what will happen? They will be exposed to some amount of oxygen at least, right? When they will be exposed to some amount of oxygen, what will happen to these bacteria? They will produce reactive oxygen species, right? They will undergo oxidative stress. But problem with these bacteria are that they don't have defenses against the oxidative stress. These bacteria do not have any enzymes to deal with the reactive oxygen species. So we say that these bacteria do not have, yes, superoxide, dismutase, they don't have and they don't have catalases of course, catalase and they don't have peroxidases. So what we can say that why these bacteria are growing only at the bottom because they have most primitive metabolic pathway to produce energy that is anaerobic respiration or anaerobic fermentation right secondly why they are absent from the top one reason that they cannot use the oxygen for growth but second reason is that in the upper part of the tube as you move from down to up oxygen concentration progressively increase and at higher oxygen concentration or simply in the presence of oxygen simply oxygen presence that is a kiss of death for these bacteria why because if these bacteria are exposed to the oxygen they will be there will be production of reactive oxygen species like superoxides and yes hydrogen peroxide and hydroxyl ions and they will damage the bacterial macromolecules like proteins and lipids and DNA and RNA and these bacteria do not have defenses against oxidative stress they don't have any uh, superoxide dismutases they don't have any catalases that is why they cannot survive in the presence of oxygen so again I will repeat they cannot grow in the presence of oxygen because they cannot use the oxygen and they cannot survive in the presence of oxygen because oxidative stress will kill these bacteria and they don't have antioxidant enzymes right now these bacteria are said to be that they only grow in very very anoxic environment either there's no oxygen or there's a half percent of oxygen or very little oxygen or no oxygen preferably so these bacteria are said to be obligate anaerobe they are said to be obligate anaerobe that some examples of such bacteria are yes i can tell you some examples for example anaerobic bacteria first of all they are very commonly present our normal flora in our mouth anaerobic bacteria versus aerobic bacteria is 100 to 1 in the mouth right in our mouth right the 100 anaerobic bacteria against one aerobic this is the ratio and if you go to colon right there are thousand versus one thousand anaerobic bacteria and one aerobic and if you go to stool flora normal uh, fecal flora right they say 99% of the normal fecal flora consists of anaerobic fecal flora 99% of bacteria present in our fecal matter are anaerobic bacteria right so these bacteria again anaerobic bacteria in our this test tube thioglycolate broth culture media will only multiply at the bottom and they will survive only in the strict anaerob anaerobic environment here and examples of these bacteria are yes number one gram positive cocci which are strictly anaerobic i can say pepto streptococci pepto strepto cocci then gram negative anaerobic cocci 
classically we can mention these are also cocci and these cocci are gram negative pepto streptococci are gram positive and both of them are strict anaerobe or obligate anaerobe uh, the here example is willow willow nella again i will write it yes there are many bacteria in this group but i will just mention some important willow nella paru parula right so peptostreptococcus willionella these are both cocci this is gram positive cocci this is gram negative cocci and both of them are strictly anaerobic they are commonly found in our mouth and uh, peptostreptococci are also found in colon and even in vagina then there are bacilli for example gram positive bacilli we can say actinomyces actino my sees then another gram positive sporulating gram positive sporulating bacillus which is also strictly anaerobe or obligate anaerobe is very famous group clostridium clostridia different type of clostridium like clostridium perfringens or clostridium tetanii or clostridium botulinum right or yes then there are some other gram these were gram positive cocci this is gram negative cocci they this is these are gram positive bacilli and then there are gram negative bacilli also which are strictly anaerobic and these gram negative bacilli some of them i will mention here yes in obligate anaerobe strictly gram negative bacilli right they are like porphyromas por phi romas privotellas uh then yes bacteroides fragilis roides fragilis right now all of them are strict anaerobic if we say give an example of strict anaerobic or obligate anaerobic which is gram positive coccus peptostreptococci example of gram negative coccus which is strictly an aerobe or obligate anaerobe willionella then gram positive gram positive bacilli which are strictly anaerobe actinomyces clostridium and then gram negative bacilli which are also anaerobic bacteria like porphyroma privotella bacteroides bacteri bacteroides fragilis right now these bacteria strict anaerobic bacteria they are classically found in polymicrobial environment for example if there is mixed microbial abscess in the oral cavity or mixed microbial or polymicrobial infection in gingival areas or in the pulmonary area or intra abdominal abscesses right so these bacteria anaerobic are classically found over there and anaerobic bacteria are producing very foul smelling pus right but i will not go into detail of that right now we were only discussing that obligate anaerobic bacteria are able to grow strictly at the bottom of the test tube our culture media because in the most bottom area right what we have most anaerobic environment and they cannot grow near the top of the tube because they cannot tolerate oxygen their aero tolerance is very less why they cannot tolerate the oxygen simply because they don't have enzymes against the reactive oxygen sufficiency right this is one thing then we come to another group of bacteria in this case what we see that bacteria are multiplying 
right and they are present throughout the tube throughout the culture media it means if bacteria are showing a pattern in which bacteria show their survival throughout the tube and almost uniform almost uniform growth so this type of bacteria this in second tube how they are different from the first number one at the top there is no massive growth because there is no massive growth at the top it means they are unable to use oxygen for multiplication because if they use aerobic if they use aerobic respiration they will produce lot of what atp and then they will grow in massive amount in upper part but they are not growing in massive amount in upper part but they are growing throughout the tube if they are growing throughout the tube and not at the top massively it means number one they are don't having aerobic respiration because if they were having aerobic respiration they were able to do the aerobic respiration then in aerobic environment which is upper part of the tube they must be able to produce lot of atp and they must be able to grow there but because they don't grow in high concentration in upper part it means they are unable to do aerobic respiration and get lot of atp actually these bacteria are using as they can grow in the lower part and throughout the tube it means they are able to use metabolic pathway for the atp generation which is anaerobic and aerobic for example anaerobic fermentation fermentation right they can use the fermentation now now we have to see one thing these are also anaerobic fermentation those are also anaerobic fermentation the question is why they are, their growth is limited or their presence is limited only at the bottom and why this group is throughout the tube answer is that obligate anaerobes they cannot survive in upper part of the tube where some oxygen is present because oxygen produces reactive oxygen species and these bacteria are defenseless against the reactive oxygen species they don't have dismutases and they don't have catalases or peroxidases but when we come to this bacteria they are growing through the tube it means that their growth is independent of oxygen it means their growth is what their growth is anaerobic not aerobic because if it were aerobic it should be at the top in high amount secondly but they are why they are present at the top answer is because they tolerate the oxygen why do they tolerate the oxygen that because they have some of the antioxidant enzymes for example these bacteria are having when they produce they are having superoxide dismutase they are of course having and about catalases we can say they may have or may not have but superoxide dismutase they have so even though they are multiplying anaerobically but due to presence of superoxide dismutase they are able to deal with the toxicity of oxygen they can tolerate the presence of oxygen even though they cannot take the advantage of oxygen for rapid multiplication but because they can survive in oxygen presence so we say they are aero tolerant the multiplication is anaerobic they don't have aerobic metabolism but they are able to yes they are able to deal with reactive oxygen species because they have partial defenses partial defenses mean at least they are surely having uh, superoxide dismutase and might be a little level of catalase or catalase may be absent right so in first category and second category the common thing is both of them are having anaerobic metabolism and both of them do not have aerobic respiratory metabolism this is common in first and the second group but special thing the difference between first and the second group is first group cannot tolerate the oxygen it cannot tolerate the oxygen so they have to hide in the bottom right if some of them go up they will be 
they will not be able to uh, fight against the reactive oxygen species and they will be dead. So they only survive and grow at the bottom. The second group, because they do have some defenses against reactive oxygen species, because they have sodium, sorry, they have uh, superoxide dismutases, right? So they tolerate the presence of oxygen. They tolerate the presence of oxygen, but they don't utilize oxygen for the multiplication. They, are, they don't have aerobic, aerobic respiration. We say this group of bacteria ha are having a, an attitude towards oxygen. They don't care oxygen is there or not. If oxygen is there, it doesn't matter to them, they can defend themselves. If oxygen is not there, it doesn't matter to them, they can still multiply and survive. So we say that this group of bacteria are basically arrow tolerant. What is this? Aero tolerant bacteria and of course their metabolism is anaerobic so we should say them aero tolerant anaerobic bacteria right so what does it mean it is the most primitive type of bacteria obligate anaerobe because they can only survive and multiply in anaerobic environment and in aerobic environment against reactive oxygen species, these are defenseless. So they cannot multiply and they cannot survive where there is oxygen. And these multiply by driving energy from anaerobic system, anaerobic fermentation, but they drive energy from there. So they don't care oxygen is there or not for their energy derivative, but they do have defenses against the, at least partial defenses against the reactive oxygen species. So they will be present throughout the tube, right? Now, a uh, classical example here is aero tolerant are QT bacterium, acne, acnes. Now, this uh, is co very commonly found on the skin in all human beings, right? And if they found an anaerobic environment, uh, if they find an appropriate environment, then they will multiply and they are the cause of number one, acne vulgaris. Cause of acne vulgaris. Secondly, these QT bacterium, right, they are also found in different implants used in our body, right, surgical implants or prosthetics, they also infect over there. But what I really, right now what I am trying to discuss with you, that the main difference, main common thing between obligate anaerobe and aerotolerant anaerobe is both of them are anaerobic bacteria, both of them can do the fermentation. But Obligate cannot survive in presence of oxygen. They can survive in the presence of oxygen. Now we come to the next group. These are more developed bacteria. In this group, what we see that they are developing, they are multiplying in a big number in upper part of the tube. But they are present throughout. They are present throughout. Now we have to answer this thing. First of all, they are multiplying at the top in heavy number, right? There is a very dense growth of these bacteria at the top. It means they are using oxygen, yes, to produce ATP. And because it means they are using aerobic respiratory, cellular respiration, right? They are using oxygen as the final electron acceptor during the process of ATP production. Now, but why they are present in lower part? Because in upper part where they find oxygen, they use oxygen. But when they go to the lower part, there is no oxygen, they switch their metabolism to anaerobic metabolism, right? So they can even multiply in lower part of the test tube because now we can say they are double metabolism. 
like first two they are maintaining their anaerobic metabolic pathway to produce energy but in addition they have developed metabolic pathway they have developed the capacity to metabolic pathway for aerobic respiration right now how we know that they are using oxygen because they are in a very dense colony upward there is very dense the growth density of the growth at the top is maximum why because top it is using aerobic respiration and lower it is using fermentation right because upper part oxygen is available lower part anaerobic environment right but why there is more growth in upper part and why there is relatively less growth in lower part answer is very simple even though it can run aerobic and aerobic metabolism as well as anaerobic metabolism for energy production but because aerobic metabolism is more efficient it produces more atp and anaerobic environment produces less atp so growth of the bacteria is less in lower part and more in the upper part right so we can say that this bacteria are actually aerobically aerobic respiration yes they are using it anaerobic fermentation and aerobic fermentation they are using that right now what we see at the top they are behaving as aerobic bacteria in lower part they are behaving as anaerobic bacteria so they have they have a faculty even though they prefer the prefer to multiply in the presence of oxygen if oxygen is present if oxygen is available they will utilize oxygen for example if there are 100 billion bacteria 100 billion bacteria in a uh, wound such bacteria as long as oxygen is present over there they will multiply by aerobic respiration but when oxygen is depleted from the wound and that wound become anaerobic environment they will switch their metabolism to fermentation right so we can say these bacteria are even though preferring oxygen for the growth but they have faculty to to go to anaerobic energy metabolism that is why they are said to be facultative anaerobes this group of bacteria is called facultative anaerobes because even though they prefer to be aerobic in the presence of oxygen but if oxygen is not present what they will do they will switch to anaerobic metabolism such bacteria are very dangerous you know why because they can survive in different environment and produce diseases if in our body there is aerobic environment they can multiply if there is anaerobic environment they can multiply and if in our body in disease process if oxygen environment oxygen tension in the wound is changing first it is aerobic and then anaerobic it will again in both conditions it will multiply so they are you can say having this flexibility to switch their metabolism energy metabolism between aerobic or anaerobic situation depending upon the presence of oxygen or absence of oxygen and because they are able to they have a good relation with oxygen they can utilize oxygen and multiply and they are also present in upper part it means whatever reactive oxygen species is produced right on exposure to oxygen these bacteria must have defenses and it means that they are having superoxide dismutases in good amount and they are having catalases in good amount yes right now we can say why they are in high number in upper part because they have all the metabolic pathway for the aerobic respiration which produces massive amount of atp and they multiply in big number at the top of the tube why they are still present in throughout the tube and even up to bottom because as you move down oxygen concentration become less and eventually uh, lower most part of the tube uh, shows micro environment which is strictly anaerobic 
there they will switch to fermentative process and they will still keep on multiplying of course less than the top and of course if they are surviving at the top and multiplying at the top it means they must have a powerful defenses against reactive oxygen species it means they must have antioxidant enzyme they are having yes they are having superoxide dismutases they are having catalases they do have peroxidases so that reactive oxygen species can be destroyed and uh, they can protect themselves uh, against these reactive oxygen species right now the classical example of such bacteria are your very famous staphylococcus aureus staphylococcus aureus and then other also very commonly known bacteria like salmonella e coli which is also called escherichia coli or simply e coli or yersinia pestis yersinia and many other now what i want to tell you these are really masterful bacteria very flexible bacteria because they can multiply in aerobic environment right and if there is no oxygen they will switch to anaerobic fermentation and multiply and because they have very strong defenses against reactive oxygen species right they can also not only uh, they can also survive in oxygen requirement so it means they are having strong defense against oxygen toxicity such bacteria have one thing very important that let's suppose if they are present in a wound right if they are present in a wound in deeper part of the body what they will do as long as oxygen is coming to the wound they will keep on multiplying by aerobic respiration the moment and eventually once all oxygen is utilized they will switch themselves to anaerobic environment still multiplying and because they help the yes if there is no too much oxygen coming in the uh, that wound area then because these bacteria keep on utilizing the oxygen they can convert the wound into anaerobic environment and if there are anaerobic bacteria over there they will also grow over there so these are really dangerous bacteria facultative anaerobes but actually don't be fooled they are facultative aerobe as well as fa facultative anaerobe we say facultative aerobe because if a need arise they can be multiplying in full oxygen situation they are facultative anaerobe if oxygen disappears they will be still multiplying right so now we have discussed let's compare these three then we'll move on further in first tube let's suppose this is first tube second tube and third tube in the first tube or culture media sodium thioglycolate right broth in this tube why bacteria are growing only at the bottom why obligate anaerobe only multiply and survive at the bottom very simple because oxygen is number one they cannot use oxygen for their multiplication and energy production number two they don't have defenses or enzymes against the oxygen reactive reactive oxygen species so they cannot multiply at the top and even they cannot survive at the oxygen environment so they are strict anaerobic bacteria right but when we go to the tube number two aero tolerant anaerobes they are also having anaerobic fermentation pathway for energy production they cannot use oxygen as a final oxygen uh, electron acceptor so they are not aerobic but they can tolerate oxygen why they can tolerate oxygen because they can at least to some extent neutralize reactive oxygen species why because as they are they are having dismutases and may or may not have some degree of catalysis also so such bacteria are called aero tolerant they develop throughout the tube right and metabolism is anaerobic right and survival is throughout here metabolism is anaerobic and they cannot survive in the presence of oxygen here we come growth is 
growth is throughout the tube but at the top it is very high density growth what does it mean that because growth is throughout the tube it means anaerobic environment they can multiply and in upper part bacteria are present it means they have very strong defenses against reactive oxygen species and at the top they are multiplying too much it means they are doing aerobic respiration at the top and creating lot of ATP so density of growth of the bacteria at the top is more than the bottom where is anaerobic fermentation going on and that produces relatively less ATP right now we come to the next group now this group is different in this group we find that bacteria grow not at the top not at the bottom they are growing somewhere below the top right now I will one by one discuss in this fourth tube the type of bacteria which are growing here number one why they are not present below if they are not present below it means they cannot they cannot multiply in anaerobic environment because if they could multiply in anaerobic environment they must be present in lower part of the bottom uh, tube also so because they are not present in anaerobic area in the tube so it means their multiplication or growth is dependent on oxygen right so basically they are aerobic but the question is that why they are not present at the top this is very important if they are aerobic bacteria why they are not present at the top answer is the defenses against reactive oxygen species is only partial they don't have full defenses here there are full defenses that they could multiply anaerobically as well as aerobically and they were having dismutases also they were having catalases and peroxidases so due to this reason they were even not only able to multiply aerobically but they were able to survive very high concentration of oxygen also almost equal to the atmospheric oxygen right but here you come as i mentioned in previous lecture at the top oxygen concentration is 21 percent here oxygen uh, let's suppose tension is zero here it is somewhere 5 and 10 and maybe 12 so so what we see as you go from top to bottom oxygen tension keep on decreasing now problem with this group of bacteria is if they are not they are absent from below it means anaerobic and aerobic fermentation is fermentation is absent they are unable to generate energy in anaerobic environment without oxygen and they are in that area where some oxygen is present so we say aerobic yes aerobic respiration is pathways working and present now the last question but why they are not multiplying heavily at the top answer is that their defenses against high oxygen concentration are not well developed right that if ros reactive oxygen species is produced their defenses are only partial defenses partial defenses mean they defense against partial defenses against oxidative stress for example if this bacteria is at this level at top it will it will be exposed to very high oxygen concentration and they will produce lot of reactive oxygen species if they are below then less tension of oxygen and if oxygen tension is less right they will be exposed to less amount of reactive oxygen species and less amount of reactive oxygen species they can deal with why they can deal with because superoxide dismutases they are having superoxide dismutases they are having but catalases either they don't have or very little or very little so why they are absent from below because they cannot do anaerobic respiration right they cannot survive without oxygen but why they are absent from the top because they cannot deal with too much oxygen also they do need oxygen for the growth and survival and multiplication but too much oxygen 
produces so much reactive oxygen species which they cannot neutralize because their defenses right defenses against the oxidative stress are only partially developed they do have dismutases but they might have very little amount of catalases or no catalases so such bacteria are said to be micro aerophiles that they they do like files mean lover aero mean air lover oxygen lover but micro amount not full concentration of oxygen smaller concentration of oxygen right they don't multiply they are not present in anaerobic area they are not present in full aerobic area they are present in micro aerobic area now classical example here is yes helicobacter pylori helico bacter pylori we will discuss it later this bacteria are very important it multiplies in the stomach and it produces gastric peptic ulcer duodenal peptic ulcer and it also increases the risk for the development of adenocarcinoma or development of adenocarcinoma of the stomach or it increases even risk of development of muco uh, what is this malt malt mean yes malt means mucosa associated lymphoid tumors right but we will not discuss that here the only thing which i want to remember how to remember helicobacter pylori you just imagine there are small helicopters they are small helicopters right these small helicopters these are micro helicopters and they need less oxygen but some oxygen so they are micro aerophiles now you know colon it has totally anaerobic environment but in stomach some oxygen is there but not as good amount of oxygen as in the atmosphere so stomach can provide micro aero aerobic environment so micro aerophiles classically presentation is helicobacter pylori now let's compare this category with the remaining right if you look at the tube number 1 they were having what anaerobic only anaerobic energy production fermentation and they could not survive the exposure to oxygen as they don't have enzymes to deal with reactive oxygen species here aero tolerant they also have only fermentation pathway or anaerobic pathway to generate energy but they do tolerate the air so they are anaerobic energy metabolism is anaerobic energy metabolism is anaerobic but they do tolerate the oxygen so they are present throughout the tube but when you compare aero tolerant anaerobic with micro aerophiles listen with all your ears open many students confuse between aero tolerant anaerobes and micro aerophiles actually aero tolerant anaerobes are running anaerobic metabolism running anaerobic metabolism for energy production fermentation but they do tolerate oxygen but they do not use oxygen to produce the energy but they have partial defenses right micro aerophiles they don't have anaerobic metabolism they are having what kind of metabolism aerobic to produce energy because they don't have anaerobic they don't grow in the lower part and because their defenses are not full against the reactive oxygen especially shit species so they cannot survive even in the upper part and multiply because high concentration of oxygen is toxic to them but at lower oxygen concentration somewhere between 10 to 15 or uh, around 10 Uh, oxygen tension that is enough for them to produce enough atp to multiply but this level of oxygen produces relatively less reactive oxygen species as compared to the top right and if there's less reactive oxygen species they can uh, neutralize that with dismutases because catalases are less in them or absent so compare and what about this these are the most naughty bacteria most masterful bacteria why 
they multiply in anaerobic environment they can also multiply in aerobic environment and when both metabolism are going on because aerobic environment produces more atp so they multiply more at the top of the tube but they do multiply up to the bottom secondly they are also having full developed defenses against the reactive oxygen species they have very high concentrations of antioxidant enzymes like dismutases and catalases and peroxidases right so now we come to the last category here we see that bacteria are growing only at the top the bacteria are growing only at the top of the tube now if bacteria are multiplying only at the top and how would you interpret it if they are having a very high density of growth at the top it means they do have what aerobic respiration aerobic respiratory pathway for atp generation right but they are not present at the bottom it means they don't have they cannot multiply or in the what anaerobic environment because they are absent from lower part so we say that these bacteria do not multiply an an aerobic energy metabolism like fermentation they cannot do they can only multiply in the presence of oxygen and because they survive and multiply in the presence of oxygen it means they know how to deal with reactive oxygen species they can kill it well why because have very very highly developed what number 1 yes superoxide dismutases number 2 they do have catalases and all in a very good concentration and even peroxidases now these bacteria are called obligate aerobes because they do multiply only in good concentration of oxygen and they cannot multiply in anaerobic environment because their metabolism is strictly aerobic right so but they do have defenses very good against the reactive oxygen species so they use the oxygen for their betterment to produce lot of atp and whenever oxygen produces reactive oxygen species like superoxides or hydrogen peroxide or hydroxyl ions radicals uh, their enzymes antioxidant enzymes will destroy those reactive oxygen species and protect these bacteria right the uh, classical example of these bacteria is number one is mycobacterium tuberculosis and i can give you one more example like pseudomonas yes pseudomonas eri jonosa now now we have seen all of them let's make a review if i say in this tube there are bacteria multiplying only at the bottom it means they do have anaerobic energy metabolism they are not present at the top what does it mean number 1 they cannot survive the presence of oxygen and they cannot multiply in the presence of oxygen such bacteria will be which are only present in the bottom obligate anaerobes and at the end you come to the bacteria which only use aerobic respiration and they can they have fully developed defenses against what against the active oxygen species and because the so they only multiply at the top as they don't have anaerobic metabolism so obligate anaerobes and obligate aerobes the difference is here only anaerobic metabolism for energy is present here only aerobic metabolism for energy is present here defenses against reactive oxygen species are not there so they cannot even survive in the presence of oxygen they have very strong defenses against reactive oxygen species so they multiply at the top and survive at the top they multiply at the bottom and survive at the bottom right they are running away from oxygen they love oxygen they love oxygen so much that without oxygen they will die so these are called obligate aerobes and these are called obligate anaerobes and in the middle the champions the champions they can multiply anaerobically the facultative anaerobes 
that they can they have faculty to convert to anaerobic proliferation even though multiplication even though they prefer to multiply in the oxygen so we call them facultative anaerobes these are throughout the tube they are present so it means they are having anaerobic energy production like fermentation but at the top they are most densely multiplied right growth most dense growth it means they are aerobic metabolism as well so aerobic and anaerobic both and because they are multiplying and surviving at the top it means very good defenses against reactive oxygen species they must be having lot of superoxide dismutases they must be having lot of catalases and peroxidases and again what is here here the bacteria are multiplying throughout the tube right but not at the top not heavy density so it means they are anaerobic metabolism but they survive in the tube in anaerobic environment as well as aerobic environment so they cannot use oxygen for their betterment for multiplication they are anaerobic but they do tolerate the oxygen they are not killed by oxygen they don't mind they really they they have bacteria with the attitude oxygen is there or it is not there they don't care they keep on multiplying in their own fashion depending on their fermentation processes and when you come to this type they are also aerobic but what is the difference micro aerophiles and obligate aerobe both of them do not have anaerobic metabolism both of them are only multiplying in the presence of oxygen but here defenses are very strong against reactive oxygen species so they multiply at the maximum oxygen concentration like atmospheric oxygen tension like 21% but they have partial defenses so high oxygen exposure will lead to destruction of these bacteria so they do need oxygen but they cannot tolerate the very high concentration of oxygen due to partial defenses against reactive oxygen species as they have only what sod superoxide dismutases and catalases are either not there or in very small amount so they multiply at lower oxygen level and they are, they are not at the bottom present because they are not having anaerobic metabolism they are not at the top present because in spite of having despite having aerobic metabolism they are unable to survive at the top due to partial defenses so they are having the maximum density of growth and survival lower than the top or of course above the bottom right so this is how we class uh, this is how we classify bacteria according to their relationship with oxygen so what is the relationship once more a review here relationship they don't use oxygen at all anaerobic obligate they don't use oxygen for their multiplication and they don't tolerate also oxygen when we come to aero tolerant very simple they they don't use oxygen for their multiplication anaerobic metabolism is used but they do tolerate oxygen due to partial defenses facultative anaerobe the master bacteria they are they have preserved their anaerobic metabolic pathway to produce energy and they have also acquired the aerobic pathway to develop oxygen and uh, sorry to develop atp so they are able to multiply in anaerobic environment as well as in the aerobic environment but of course uh, if both environment are given to them they will multiply in both areas but they will more multiply in the aerobic environment because aerobic respiration produces more atp molecule per glucose right as compared to anaerobic and of course they are having very good defenses right next what we come to these Uh, these are the bacteria which are actually aerobic but we call them micro aerophilic because their defenses against oxygen are partial so they can they they only they need oxygen for multiplication as they don't have anaerobic metabolic pathway they need oxygen for multiplication but full concentration of oxygen are toxic to them because they cannot deal with uh, reactive oxygen species of high concentration uh, as they do not have catalases they only have partial defenses like they are having only what superoxide dismutases or if catalases are present they are in very small amount right and last amount we have seen in this category these are the bacteria they don't have metabolic pathway 
for the anaerobic energy generation they only produce energy at the presence of high concentration of oxygen and they have very good aero tolerance they have very good air tolerance or oxygen tolerance because they have very good defenses they have high concentration of superoxide dismutases and catalases so this is in uh, this is we conclude here that how bacteria can be classified into different categories depending upon their relationship with oxygen that can they produce energy with oxygen or without oxygen they are aerobic or anaerobic secondly how is their aero tolerance that can they tolerate the presence of oxygen can they tolerate the presence of the active oxygen species or not those bacteria which are having high concentration of yes sodium uh, sorry superoxide dismutases and catalases they are strongly aero tolerant right and those bacteria we do not have such enzymes they are not aero tolerant right right class dismissed thank you very much